Greetings, everybody. This is Winnie Riggle, and welcome back to Eden Tech. You might notice that I'm standing on our environmental tech or miner. It's still tier one. It's time to upgrade. Not only are we going to upgrade the ore miner, we are also going to build the environmental tech resource miner and the biological resource miner. And to do that, I thought it would be appropriate for us to find a place to put them because in their final form, they go from a tier one to a tier six and notice this tier one is a just six by six or seven by seven, pardon me. But in their largest form, they can be up to, I believe, 11 by 11. And there's not quite enough room over here on this side of the base for three of these things. We are also almost there in terms of the amount of rhodium to go up to the next tier of this one. So it'll be helpful if we build a building while we wait and let this process. So I thought we could put these three different resource miners over here on this side of the base. And I have laid out the template for them so that we know we have enough space. I also thought it might be fun for me to talk through the building process. I know many times I'll just build a building and we'll show up in the next episode and woo, there's a new building. So let me walk you through the steps of doing this. So we're going to build mostly with stone bricks and, and I've used them for the outline, but we're going to have accent walls made out of the bricks and of course our spruce wood. And I think this is another building that we're going to use the wrought iron from garden stuff. Okay, let's talk process. So remember I said each of the, oh look, dead skeleton. Remember I said that each of these ore miners represented by the crosses in the middle of these squares are gonna have to be 11 by 11. I've reserved space, I think that's 13 by 13. Yeah, so there's seven blocks and then a block in the middle. So these spaces are 15 by 15, just to make sure we have enough room to walk around it inside a room. I also thought we could have small walkways that connect them. So that's what the spacers are in the middle. And of course there are three of them. Now I could just build three giant squares, right? And we'd have a place to put them. But that's boring, right? So let me talk about how we turn giant squares into something a little more interesting. We're gonna do this pretty easily. I'm just gonna make kind of a random pattern that's symmetrical, so it'll be the same on both sides off the front of this building. So we're just gonna give it a little more shape. We're going one, two, three, and then over one, two, three, and then over one, two, three, and then we're gonna go across. Oops. So we're just making the building shape better than a square. And we're not making it complicated, just not a square. So see how now we've changed this wall to have a little bit more dimension. So it's not just this long, giant, flat shape. And what we wanna do, so now that I've removed the flat part of that wall, we can do the same thing on all the other sides. So count over one, two, three, and then start with that block. One, two, three, start with this block. One, two, three, oops. Start with this block, one, two, three and then connect them. And then we start from the other side. Oops. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Same shape, other side. And suddenly we don't have a giant square. The next step so we will do that on three of the sides for this one, two sides for this one, and then this last end, we'll do three sides as well. So what we're gonna end up with will look like kind of a series of buildings connected together. And I'm hoping it'll be kind of reminiscent of, uh, you know, an industrial block in a city. And we'll bring our paths around the side and bring our path along the front. You'll be able to enter the building um, at any point in the hallways. So let's do one more side together. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then connect them. 
ish. Like I'm just gonna go down far enough so I can start to process it in their end. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we get rid of the blocks here. This also will give us room to put storage systems for some of the resources that we're gonna have. And I could connect those up to the RS. So now we have a much more interesting shape on the ground than a plain square, right? Okay, next step. It's an interesting shape, but it's entirely made of stone brick. That's not very exciting at all. So let's change that. Let's say that we want pieces of this build to be brick because this matches our other palettes. And so we have to make a decision. Do I want to turn the crooked walls, like the ones that are step backed into brick, or do I want the facing to be brick? Now we've kind of done the facing as brick on our power building. And I'm a fan of that look. So that's all we're gonna do is replace anywhere there's a long stretch of straight blocks. We're gonna make it the brick. And right now I'm just indicating in the design, remember we're still in the design phase, which is part of your building phase. I'm just gonna indicate that this is going to be made of brick, these walls. And they are, mm, they're straight walls, but we can accent them with spruce, our additional building block to make them less boring. And this is also where our windows will go as well. Eh. And I am cooking up a whole bunch more bricks because we're gonna need them. And then the side parts will be just like we have on our power building. We'll make them out of stone brick and then accent them with a few pieces of spruce. So let's do that now and just decide where our spruce columns are gonna go. Well, let me get rid of some of this weird stuff in my inventory, like coins and bones. Okay, so we want accent pieces. Here I seem to have just used them against flat places to make more accent. And these are actually factory blocks, not spruce. But we're gonna stick with our spruce. Uh, let's see. Do we think this would look good to have them in the corners? A lot of building design sometimes is just trying something out and seeing if you like the look of it. I kind of like them tucked into the corners of these and that way it doesn't matter which side, like this side has less of these back and forth items and it'll be less visually weird if we make the placement of those blocks the same. Now here's where I talked about being able to give this a little bit more dimensionality. Ooh, that's a flower under there. So we'll do that and maybe like this. So this is just guidance about where the outside structure for the building is gonna be. So it's gonna look a little bit circular. It'll help that the walls are differently shaped. Hmm, I'm not sure about these here. Decisions, decisions. And the next step from this point, of course, is to fill in the walls. So we're going to take our stone brick and decide how tall these need to be. Now I know the ore miners are gonna be something on the order of nine blocks tall. And we want to definitely have room to have plenty of ceiling height over them. So if we go up from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, that gives us a building that's slightly shorter than our power building. So we'll add visual interest. It's taller than our barn and taller than our workshop. So that's another thing to consider as you're doing building design, especially when you're doing multiple buildings in a base is you can stick to the same block palette, but how are you adding visual interest to a collection of builds in the same location? Because cities don't all have identical buildings, right? Even if you have a downtown area, 
that's been built using similar materials because it was built in a similar time frame. None of the buildings actually look identical. Or if they do, you had amazing city planners. Okay, so I am going to build these up. Probably off camera because placing blocks is a little boring. Do, 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 do. But let's go ahead and do one of the brick walls together. Okay, so let's, this is gonna be our doorway. So this is, these are clearly gonna be bricks all the way up to the height of the building. And there. And there, and then probably one on the top. And then we leave enough room for the door and then decide whether we have windows in this space. I think the answer is yes, but I'm not gonna start a window for a couple of blocks. We wanna give the eyeball a rest. So maybe we have windows one, two, three blocks high. That gives us three and three. That's nice. And then over here, we'll do the same thing. I tried not to make windows where I'm joining two different kinds of blocks just because it can be distracting to your eye. You can be like, why would that window not be surrounded in concrete or not be surrounded in brick? I don't know. That's a personal preference. You're certainly welcome to do whatever you want. Whoop. And then I don't ever make a window come up to the top. You always want to frame. And this is just kind of just deciding what you want. Like, do we want the windows to be wide like that? I think so. I think that's nice. And maybe let's keep this theme of three high. That's a lot of windows. Maybe we have no window there. And that'll give us more room to put things like shutters, or pardon me, the trap doors to add a little interest. So we'll use the trap doors to kind of make shapes that are good. You know, I think I'm gonna make this. Oh, you know what we need? The other thing, don't forget that blocks that come in different shape varieties are also important to use. So you can add, keep getting turned around. You can add shape to the building by using stairs. Now that makes the window shrink, but it does add visual interest. I think what we're gonna do, I still like the idea of them being three tall. Maybe only on the top ones here. I like it. That's it, that's really the build process. And I think we'll do the same thing here. Make a little bit of an interesting shape with the windows. And it'd probably be a good idea to go ahead and finish out our design for that front brick part with the trap doors. I think I have quite a few of those, I do. Trap doors and the spruce. Don't want to run out of that. And for now, I'm gonna put some of this stone brick away so I have room to work. So we are gonna have, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the spruce on here. And we're going to make a framework. What? Uh, uh. And like that. And then maybe we bring this down one because that's more interesting. And then maybe on these corners we have sticky outy bits. Because remember, part of what we want to do is make that wall less flat. Because flat's not very exciting. Okay, and if we put trapdoors underneath each window. That further adds some definition to that. We'll put one there. And then we can do the same thing down here. Oop. 
There we go. No grass hiding there. Okay. Like so. And then maybe one above the door. And then now let's bring this framework up again to our roof line. I love having flight and creative. It makes building so much easier. Well, that might be a happy accident. Mm, no. We'll do another sticky outy bit at the top and we might go up one more level on the roof just to have a framework on top of those windows. So what I mean by that is doing this. Dun, dun, dun. Like so. Not too bad. Okay, so the next step is to go around and fill in all the walls, including the brick sides with the block palette I've chosen and hopefully I won't run out of bricks. So I will get busy building and bring you back for an update. And we're back for a quick building update. You might notice that I have finished one section of the building. Yay, we have the walls up and most of the decoration on the outside. Uh, for now, ignore the strange blue blocks that are floating. It occurred to me that this building is going to be very similar in three different parts. And it might be a great opportunity to use the RF tools builder in order to make a copy of this building, flip it around the other direction and put it on the other side. So we're going to do a couple of things in order to make that happen. The first thing we need to do is have access to our RS over on this side of the map. I think I've done this off screen in the past. And so I want to take the opportunity to show you real quick how easy it is. You create a network receiver and a network transmitter. The network transmitter gets connected to your RS system just anywhere on the line. So I have one over there and we'll see where it is in just a minute. The receiver goes out where you want access to your RS, in this case, our building site. And then all you have to do is put a wireless transmitter on top of it. And I've also added range upgrades to that transmitter. Now, in order to connect this receiver to the RF system, what we need to do is make a network card, which are pretty cheap. They're not terrible. They're just a little bit of quartz enriched iron paper and an advanced processor. And you just shift right click on the network receiver that you're trying to hook it up to. And if you, oops, don't throw it. If you look at it, it'll say linked to an XYZ coordinate, which is exactly what we want. So we're gonna take this little network card all the way back over here where we have our emitter transmitter, which I've kind of just hidden down in this hole. There's three transmitters right here. It's the third one is empty. See, it says missing network card. We're just gonna stick that network card in there. And now when we go back across our neighborhood and look at our network receiver, you'll notice it's powered, which is magic. And I have access to the RS on the build site, which is very important because we're gonna need it in order to collect the materials. Okay, let's talk about the RF tools, space card, space chamber, space card, how to copy a building process. So what you're gonna need to do is make one space chamber controller block and seven space chamber corner blocks. They are not tragically expensive. They're literally a little bit of glass, uh, some lappy, and then the machine frame from RF tools, which are also fairly cheap. To turn one of those space chamber corner blocks into a controller block, you just add a couple of ember pearls and redstone torches. So you arrange these, you'll notice in a cube around the shape that you're trying to copy. They need to be aligned on top of each other and parallel to one another, and they need to be outside of the shape you're trying to copy. If you've done this correctly and you right click on the space chamber controller block, which is one of those eight blocks, it'll give you a nice message that says chamber successfully created. 
Yay. Okay. Now we need a way to copy this information to another part of the map. So we're going to use a space chamber card. This is very easy. Once you've successfully created that space, you just shift right click on that space chamber controller. And now we have a card that is set to channel one. You take that card over to where you're going to build your building and we're going to set up an RF tools builder. Also not terribly expensive. If we look at it an ender pearl, a little bit of bricks, redstone, and one of those machine frames. However, the builder that I am using, I have done what's called um, infusing. So let's take a second to talk about infusing RF tool machines. If we go over here, I keep picking up feathers because a chicken is shedding feathers. You make a machine infuser and you load it up with dimensional shards. And because we have our automatic mining happening with that environmental tech or miner, I've got a ton of dimensional shards. You simply put the machine you want to infuse in here and it gets a percentage of infusion. If you infuse a machine, it just lowers the cost and increases the speed at which the machine operates. So I put enough dimensional shards to give it a hundred percent infusion. And it took about five stacks of dimensional shards to do that. Um, I wasn't concerned as much with the power cost because our power is in very good shape so much as, hey, let's get it built a little faster. Okay, so the way this works, we've now put down a builder. We're gonna put that space chamber card that we copied that building onto. And in fact, let me show you, if you right click in the air with the space chamber card, it shows you the list of materials and the cost to quote unquote copy and or move. And it's telling me it can't move the wire and wireless energy crystal, which is in there, which is fine. Not a problem. So it just gives you basically a list of materials, all the stone bricks, there's like 747 stone bricks, lots of stairs, spruce. I think it separates them a little bit based on some of the X, Y, Z levels. There, I know there's more than two trap doors. Here's the other four, etc. So we're just gonna put that space card, space chamber card into the RF tools builder. And then we wanna set up some options. First thing we wanna do is preview what we're gonna build. Ta-da! So click on that preview button. Now this is exactly 180 degrees different than what I wanna put here. I wanna make sure that this opening is facing on this wall. So we need to rotate the build, set the horizontal rotation angle to 180. Now you can see that that opening lines up with this one. So we basically flipped this building and the door is gonna be over here, but we don't care. We can add another door manually. Mostly I'm trying to save myself the time to construct this by hand. I mean, that's a lot of blocks to set down by hand and we're in modded, so why not use modded? And then I'll use a variation of the same thing to make the middle, I'll just cut the sides off. But for now, you're gonna need, I have it set to only operate on a redstone signal to activate. I do want it to, if the operation is not possible to wait on me to take action, uh, yeah, highlight, tell us. We wanna keep it on doing a single run and stop. I only wanna build the building once. And I have it set to say that the builder's at the southeast corner. If I change this, you'll notice our building moves over to the right. So you wanna make sure your corner setting, that's why it's so important to turn on that preview. And now we just need to put a container on top of the builder that contains all the materials that we need. And of course, that's why I connected us to the RS system so I can fill this chest with that list of items from the space chamber card. So let me do that real quick and we'll be right back and get to building. And we're back. The crate on top of our builder has the inventory of items we need to build. I've also, um, I'm carrying my crystal binder from Draconic Evolution to just show you that I've set up the power grid already for the three buildings and hooked up the builder to our power grid because that's gonna be very important for building. I believe we are ready to go. It's set on copy. The alignment looks good. It's centered anyway, that's excellent. I did go around the edges and break the grass because it was 
like here is a great example. Break that grass and then I'll reset the preview. And you'll see that now the preview goes all the way to the ground. It's because there's grass underneath. If it's not showing, just check your biologicals basically. Okay, I think we're ready. I have it set to activate on a redstone signal. And there it goes, building my building for me through the power of modded Minecraft. This is the best thing ever. It beats the hell out of a time-lapse video, right? <laughs> there we have it. I'll go ahead and turn off our builder. I don't think that even made a dent in our power situation at all. Well, it looks like we might have one block that didn't get used because there is a little flower under there. I'll go back and fix that. But at the very least, I'll clean this up and move the door to the other side, but it definitely saved quite a bit of labor in terms of building for things that are very similar. So if you've got buildings that you're duplicating, we could have also decided to move the building over on this side if we were unhappy where it was located. Like if we ever want to move our power building in its entirety somewhere else, we can just pick it up and move it. And that's the power of the RF Tools Builder. Okay, I'm gonna do this process one more time for the building in the middle and then do a little finish out and then we'll be back for another update. Alrighty, I have brought you back for another update mid build because I thought it was important to explain how I'm gonna do a portion of this building as a copy instead of copying the whole building and then having to edit it out. So what I did was I moved our space chamber corner block on this side, you'll see that now it crosses over the middle of the build because I only really want, I definitely want the right side and then I only want the left side in so much as it copies the right. So we just want these first two angles on this side, one, two. So I want it to stop here because I can manually build this wall no problem but I don't want this whole sticky outy bit in the middle because there's not enough room. This middle building will be narrower. So when I did my shape card copy I made sure that my space chamber corner blocks were at the place where I wanted to cut off the build. So now when we go over here to the builder and I turn on the preview which and I turn on the preview. Let's, oh, I don't have the card in there. <laughs> Use your error. Make sure your space card is in your builder before you try to preview. There we go. That's much better. Okay, and so it is centered. Uh, the door is going to be on the same side that the door is in the other one because there was no need. Oh, do I have it turned around? I might have it turned around. I do have it turned around. Let's fix that. I don't think we need to turn it. We had it flipped around 180 degrees. Let's set that back to zero. Yeah, so now this is the back of the building and our door is up here, which is great. Okay, so that looks, nope, that is not centered. It needs to go over two blocks to the left if we're not going to flip it. So we're just gonna move our, I need stone bricks. We're just gonna move our builder over. And let me get a storage keeper so I can move this without losing the contents because it's got all of our materials in it. So if you add one of these to a storage crate, and you can break the crate, woo, and it doesn't lose its contents. In fact, before I put that down again, let's make sure the preview is correct. Did I get that right? Yes, now that, see how that left wall lines up with this opening lines up with those bricks on the bottom? That means it's centered. That's the piece I want copied. And then the right side of the build is also lined up on this corner. Okay, and our door is in the right place. Excellent. So you may have to move your builder around. There's no way to adjust this in minutia, 
other than kind of creeping the build over. You can set what corner your builder's at, which is a good place to start. But then you'll have to tweak your builder location to get it to actually put it where you want it. This also means I need to reset the power connection. Oop. Well, and these blocks are pseudo solid, which is cool. Okay, I still have a link to this. We want to link it to the builder by right clicking. Yay. I wonder why I have soul sand. Oh, I think there's another chicken around here. Chicken. Okay. Now let's put our materials back on top and it's slightly less. Still lots of stone bricks, spruce, glass, and bricks. I had to go make more bricks too, which is part of the reason we're coming back. Okay, and we have redstone set on to activate. It's on copy mode, not move. Uh, show me where you're building and show me the preview and turn it on. That's magic. And now that I have the builder, this will save me time in the future. Because the, I mean, that absolutely, that's so much time savings right now. And speaking of time, I actually think that's all we have time for in today's episode. In the next episode, I will have finished this out and done the details, including adding a roof. And we will go through the process of upgrading our environmental tech or miner and building the other two miners, the resource miner and the biological miner. So we'll get this little guy tucked into its new building home. In the meantime, thank you everybody for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you'd like to keep up with what's going on on the channel, don't hesitate to subscribe. And remember, as always, you are the shiny stuff that awesome is made of. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>